And I just, I just, who rides like that? And if you put like, I don't know, DS game card things in it, you can get memories back. So I quit. This is mental torment and I'm not participating. Oh, fancy seeing you here. <laughs> so a few weeks ago, I had the realization and something was stirred up in my memory that uh, Kendall and Kylie Jenner wrote a book once. <laughs> they actually wrote a book. They published a book at the height of dystopian fiction times. And uh, yeah, it, it exists. I posted a tweet about it and it soon became apparent that a lot of people uh, had forgotten about this and remembered it too. And I thought, well, well, <laughs> if this is getting this reaction, I've got to read it. <laughs> oh, God. I, I mean, it is on script for free, but because I'm me, I wanted the physical version. So look what we've got, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I wanted to learn, firstly, more about who actually has written this. And it soon became apparent there are a lot of hands working in this mess. <laughs> Kendall and Kylie Jenner are obviously the authors on the front and then when you turn in you have and Elizabeth Kilman Roman with Maya Sloan. So Elizabeth was Kylie and Kendall's handler um, so basically like the person who managed them and Maya Sloan is an author, an actual author. Also the acknowledgements Kylie and Kendall say we want to thank our entire big family for always being so supportive, especially our mum, the most amazing mummager ever. You make all of our dreams come true. <laughs> Someone, I mean, can the PR team not do a better job of writing these? Kendall and Kylie couldn't even write their own acknowledgements. They couldn't even write their own acknowledgements. Now, because I am a professional, I've done a lot of research for this book. I watched a lot of interviews of them talking about the book. Firstly, at their book signing, they look so miserable to be there. to sign the book how should I feel about reading it <laughs> during a 20 minute interview which they're there to speak about the book they speak about the book for about one minute <laughs> and they basically say that they had an idea for a movie they were just chatting and they had an idea for a movie and uh, then they decided to make it into a book. We just thought of a movie book. idea and then we were yeah. like, why not put it into a book? We love action. So. We love what kind, stuff yeah, like what kind of movies do you like? We, I mean, we're really into everything, but um, we just like had thought of something that would be fun for us to write and something different, something that not some, that someone wouldn't expect from us. So. Obviously, Chris Jenner saw Dollar Sign. And in another interview, this isn't specifically about this book, this is about the sequel. <laughs> um, it's a series of little short videos they've done on both Kylie and Kendall's YouTube channels. And it becomes clear to me that at least Kylie made an effort to know what this book is about because she'll say things to Kendall that are key to the plot or about these characters and Kendall will have no idea what she's talking about and have to pretend like she did know what she was talking about. Olivia, because Olivia is like, she has heightened senses. She oh, can right. tell when people are coming in around oh, her. Right, right, right. Okay, change your pants. Kylie makes effort in these videos to actually, you know, she's read the synopsis, she's read the key facts about the characters. Kendall has just waltz on in and hope for the best. I also read up on some interviews and some articles about the book and how this book came to be just so I could kind of uh, understand what I'm dealing with here. So along with Elizabeth Kilman Roman, who if you remember is the other author of this book, they created a broad two-page outline. <laughs> You're right. Just need a bit of space if that's okay. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. <sighs> they created a two-page outline for this. 340 page book. Describing the futuristic tale about two girls with superpowers who are secretly twins. 
Sloan was hired to execute that vision, using Kylie and Kendall as inspiration for the book's protagonists. The sisters took her along with them to New York Fashion Week and let her hang out in their hotel room while they texted their friends. <laughs> this is the worst idea I've ever had. And then, and then, and then. Miss Liz, Miss Liz, the co-author of this book, is here to step up for the girls. She says, while Sloane actually wrote the book, Elizabeth took pains to emphasise the girls' involvement. They had numerous Skype and FaceTime sessions with Sloane, she said, and the groups all marked up drafts with extensive notes. If someone proofs your book, uh, they haven't written it. You know, if someone checks it, they ha they, they, they're not the author. I went into this book with a clear mind and I think we should just get into me reading it because, uh, oh, <laughs> God. Yeah, let's just get into it because I don't think I can say any more here and I hope you enjoy pain. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> so I'm about to start Rebels City of Ninja by <laughs> Kylie and Kendall Jenner. I still can't believe I'm doing this. Um, it's a nice picture of them on the back. Yeah, today we're going to the football and so uh, I think I'll have quite a lot of time to read it in the car. I don't know what expectations to have. Because it isn't really written by them, I don't know if it's actually going to be that bad or if it's just kind of going to be like 2013 YA fantasy. I don't know whether it's going to actually be as bad as I'm thinking it is or whether it's kind of just going to be average. So I'll check back in once I have some more like concrete thoughts on what it's like. <laughs> I'm 50 pages into it. You can see that. 50 pages into it. I, I don't even know where to start. Okay. It's not great. It's it's really not great. <laughs> and I'm not worth more than that. It's uh okay, first point of action. I feel like I should have I've labored through 200 pages. I'm like how am I only on 50? <laughs> and then here's the thing. Here's the thing. The way that this is written is whack. Like it's a, it's a really weird style of writing. So in this, it, the way it's written is like loads of tiny short sentences. So we'll be with we'll one of the characters and she'll be like, I'm on my horse. It was my mother's and she's the best horse ever. And people make the mistake of thinking that she's white, but really she's ivory and people don't know what a difference that makes. And I'm riding her through the fields and she's never gone faster or something like that. And each of those is a different sentence. And I just, I just, who rides like that? <laughs> I, <laughs> no one writes like that. No one, and it's horrible to read. Maybe I could understand it if one of our, cause we follow, it's two perspectives. We're following Lex and Livia. And I can't even tell you which one is which, hang on. One's living underground in like the secret caverns and believes she's an orphan. I think they are orphans anyway. Okay, that's Lex. I was gonna get it the wrong way around. And then Livia is the one who's in like this crazy ass, um, technologically advanced society where they live in pods to protect them from pollution. Okay, so I can understand it if maybe one of the girls was written like that to show something about her personality. I don't know what, don't ask me. <laughs> but do you know what I mean? If it was a stylistic choice for one of the girls. No, the whole book is just like that. And it's so bad, it's so bad. It, a lot of the book, I'm not sure where it's gonna go yet because this is dystopian, remember? It's very genetics based. So like, I think the girls have like perfect genetics. I think their dad engineered genetics. So something to do with that. But then a massive part of it as well is like everyone genetically altering themselves, like getting their lips bigger. <laughs> How's the tea? getting their skin pulled back, getting the sparkle put back in their eyes. I mean, are we surprised? No. I mean, Kylie still looked like this back in the day. So maybe we're seeing some projection. 
I feel, I would say, oh, I feel like they're writing about what they know, but I don't think it's them writing. <laughs> but then my next point is, okay, you weren't a billionaire at this point in time, but you were a rich gals. You cannot pay someone who can write to write your book. Like, come on now, come on now. You must've had so many people knocking at your door going, sis, I want to write your book. And then you pick the one that writes like this. Fools. Fools. <laughs> I'm gonna try and read. I mean, this book is only what? Let's be serious here for a second. 340 pages. So I could try and get a good way through it. Oh, it's just bad. It's just bad. It's just bad. I just don't like it. I don't want to read it. I don't want to read it. I don't want to read it. So I've read some more. I'm. Now on page 113, it's gone to the point where I've had to start tabbing it. So I've started tabbing it. Bear in mind, I have never tabbed a book before. I thought maybe my the first book I tabbed would be a reread of a favourite book, you know. It would be a really nice experience. <laughs> Here is just to remember all the things that annoy me. <laughs> The writing for Livia is better than the writing for Lex. Lex is the one who uh, was originally in an orphanage under the, the surface level of the earth. And she's now gone to like a training academy to be like an agent of some sort. And it's so bad. Like it, <laughs> things, things just keep happening. Right, and you think, oh, that's a fairly mundane thing. And then there'll be a page break, and they'll be like, No, none of us could act the same ever again. And you're like, wait, <laughs> wait, something big just happened? And I have to go back and read it again. I'm like, okay, I see how that could be like a big thing. But it, it's just so stupid. <laughs> and like, character, she meets a guy that she ends up being best friends with who's gonna be our love interest. We, we all know where this is going. But she meets him and like, he takes her off to his most secret treasured place, like after having never spoken before. It's just so bizarre. I was writing like, does she know him already? Is this actually when they're first meeting? It's so confusing. The Livia sections, slightly better. She's on the top of the earth on the posh islands or whatever. Um, training to be like a woman in society because apparently in the future we just go back to like Jane Austen period and it's it's not it's not as terrible I'm not highlighting sections as much going low what I think there was a board meeting with the actual writers with Kendall and Kylie and they sat them down and they thought okay what elements would you like to be in this you know what dystopian future society elements should be in it. And I think everyone was just shouting ideas out. Everyone was just throwing ideas about. And instead of, you know, <laughs> instead of narrowing those ideas down, the writers just went and go, right, we've got to write anything that Kendall and Kylie say. So let's just put everything in it and not make any sense. So there, I, 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 there's so many elements to this book and I'm only a hundred pages in and I keep saying, like, I feel like I've struggled through a whole book, but at the same time, nothing's happened. We haven't actually got to anything yet. We're still in their past. There's this whole business of the archives where people have a card slot in their wrist. And if you put like, I don't know, DS game card things in it, you can get memories back. But it's like never delved into. And then someone's like, oh, I'm going to the archives. And some people have all their memories stored. Some people have none of their memories stored. And if you cross the society, you like, if you like mess up, right? I think the prison equivalent is you are sent to the archives to like be a shadowed person forever. But it's just so, it's just so bizarre. And then there's a guy who has a device that he can paint sounds with never explored um what else is there there's the whole business of the upper ground and underground thing is still confusing to me half the time i don't know where we are we spent a third of the book in the past just learning about who the characters have been up to now which could have been this could have been 30 pages this could have been 30 pages and it's like the most basic trope as well where twins are separated and one gets to live a privileged life and one gets to live you know 
well, is forced to live a poor person's life. And I don't know if there's gonna be explanation for why. Oh, I just, I just hate it. I just hate it. I just hate it. <laughs> okay, so the book's making me ill. <laughs> I've been ill for a couple of days and I haven't wanted to read this. I just haven't wanted to read it. I have, look at it, it's so sad. So I finally got two thirds of the way in. I honestly don't feel like anything has happened in the past third. And you know that's bad. <laughs> you know that's bad when I thought nothing happened in the first third, but no, really nothing happened in this third. Like I, nothing, nothing. You know the blurb, you know the bit that tells you about the book. Some books spoil a bit for you ever. I'm two thirds in and I've literally only got up to the end of the blurb. So if I'd have read the blurb, which I didn't because I didn't care enough, I would have known everything that happened in this book up until now. I could have just read that because it wasn't even like, okay, we went into their backstories, we went into their history, but it wasn't even like their history and backstories were interesting. They're boring. They're bo <coughs> <coughs> Hi guys, sorry I couldn't hack that. I'm sorry, <laughs> you knew I couldn't. That's why, you, that's probably where you got the idea from. So I quit. This is mental torment and I'm not participating. That's gross. Okay, where was I? Yeah, okay, oh my God. <laughs> okay, we're gonna go like this. So yeah, their histories and backstories aren't interesting. <laughs> I literally like Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. I spoke a bit before about how a lot of this doesn't make sense and it feels like they've just thrown random stuff together. It still feels like that. There are, t there are terms being introduced right now that I think you're supposed to believe are just normal terms like air girl. Oh, she's definitely from the air. Talking about someone who's from the higher levels. But like that hasn't been used in the rest of the book. That hasn't been said before. So if it's like it's like the author thought of it, thought of the term two thirds into the book, and didn't go back and add it in anywhere else after they thought of it, which is what you should do. And oh my god, oh my god, you should have seen my face. You should have seen my face when um Livia, the one who lives like in the islands, the, the top islands when her emergence ball was, which is supposedly when a woman finds a mate and like all the guys come and they pick her. So I just thought she was gonna get dressed up in a nice dress. She's had all this etiquette training. I was like, okay, fine, whatever. But no, she has to get on a pedestal and spin and pose, like get thrust like 60 feet up into the air, I think, and spins really fast and has to strike poses. And this is what makes her attractive. very strange <laughs> uh, i don't get it and there's no reason for this sorry i shouldn't get so loud but there's no reason for this there's no reason for this and what else oh it looks like the girls might fancy the same guy um they've both kissed him they were his first and second kiss so that's an interesting choice for the love triangle are we is he gonna end up with both of them <laughs> Honestly, I can't emphasize this enough. L most of these tabs are me highlighting something and going, what is going on? What is going on? Because I, I can read like two pages and not understand what's going on or where I am. There's never any place setting. We just move from place to place. And I can't imagine what this place looks like. I have no reference for where we are for any scene. And I'm done with it. I'm so done. Like I should be reading books I enjoy. And yet I'm putting myself through this. Is it worth it? So I took last night to collect my thoughts. It's so bad. <laughs> I gave it one star. There was a point, maybe 50 pages into this, I thought maybe I could give this two stars. You know, it's not the worst thing I've ever read. But as the book went on, it just got worse and worse. So to collect my thoughts, we're gonna have a few sections here. So the first is weirdest ass relationships in the world. We had a guy called Kane who, um, we spent like the first 150 pages of thinking that him and Lex were gonna get together. They were training at like the special ops 
um, academy together. They were like best friends, but like a relationship. You thought it was gonna turn into that. But he's so weird. He's so strange. He's a psycho. So he, I've spoken before about his machine that paints sound, like just thrown in. Doesn't really ever have that big an impact on the story. Don't know why it's there. He paints her laugh. Like he gets her to laugh and paints it. And she's like, wow promise me you'll do that again. And he goes, just wait, he said, till I paint your scream. No, no way. Definitely no. Not a chance. Nope, never, no way. Uh, <laughs> bearing in mind, they're like 12 at this point. So sexual tension, maybe not the best idea. <laughs> he has to leave. Um, he's been hired for an assignment. We don't know what it is. He kisses Lex and says, I just wanted my first kiss to be with someone I cared about. And then um, we find out he has been hired to assassinate Livia. Bearing in mind, we never really find out by whom or why he was hi hired to assassinate Olivia. Like, we just, just, that doesn't matter anymore. Anyway, so he has to kiss her to kill her. And they like fall in love in the 10 seconds they're together. And so for the rest of the book, suddenly we switch and he's into Livia. There's never any discussion of how weird it is that he first spent years of his life with Lex and then spends 10 seconds of his life with Livia and suddenly like, sorry Lex. And then towards the end of the book, Lex is like rightfully getting upset that the guy she, oh, I didn't mention, she risked her life. That's how her and Livia met because she heard out Kane was in trouble and she risked her entire life. Like she was about to die for this boy. She was about to die for that. She was about to die for it. And then he's like, sorry, I spent 10 seconds with your sister and now I like her. <laughs> and then <coughs> at the end, Lex is rightfully getting upset. She, okay, I can't find the exact bit I'm thinking of, but she basically keeps saying on multiple occasions, oh yes, it's great I've met my sister, but she isn't gonna stop me from getting what I want. I can do what I want, let her be upset. And it's like, she has no compassion for this girl. I don't understand. I don't understand. So anyway, the girl's relationship is very weird. They never grow close. Like it's just so strange. It's so strange. There's never any relationship development. Um, number two is just that it, the book has no identity. Like sis doesn't know who she is. Sis thinks she's a mix. And I touched on this before. They've just chucked loads of stuff in that they think is a dystopian novel. She's a mix of every YA dystopian novel out there. Number three is where the fuck are we? Honestly, I have never read a book where I could not envision it before. Like we'd be in high speed chases and I'd be like, are we in like a city? Are we in pipes? Cause they would mention they're not going through pipes. Are we in like the desert? I had no idea where we were for most of this book. The locations change fairly um, frequently, especially towards the end, but they're like never explained. They're never detailed. They're never like, ah, it's, I just, I, I've never, it makes it impossible to read the book because I think if you can't, for me anyway, if I can't visualize a book in my head, I'm like, where am I? Where am I? I can't, I'm just reading words on the page. I'm not following a story if I can't visualize it in my head. I just, I've never read a book that bad. I've never read something that bad at actually setting a scene. They'd just be like, yeah, we're on a rig now. And they'd jump down onto the rig, but then the rig would be above everything else. I'm like, how is this even possible in terms of gravity and locations? And I just don't understand. For me, the biggest, the biggest disappointment of them all was structure. Who is she? 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 Where did you find her? The story doesn't start until like 70 pages from the end. It's like they came up with the story, the full story. Bear in mind there's a second book. And it's like they split the story in half. So this book doesn't have a beginning, middle and end. It has a beginning and half of a middle. And so I have, I have no resolution for anything I read. I have no resolution. Nothing has been resolved. The characters have not grown. How are they so bold to think that everyone's gonna read the second book? And I, I just, I, 
No one writes a book like this. If you write a series, each book still needs to have a beginning, middle, and end, like any book. So basically, I read this book for nothing because I got nothing out of it. I didn't even read a story. If I want to read a story, I have to read the second book, which I'm not going to do. And also bear in mind, the woman who wrote this doesn't write the second one. So uh, any seeds she planted, which I don't think there were many granted, but like anything she had planned isn't going to happen in the second one. So on Goodreads, there's a review saying, I only want to read this so I can have the satisfaction of saying that Kim's sex tape had a better plot and a more powerful climax. And honestly, sis, that's right. That's not a lie. It did. <laughs> and I want to make it clear. I I didn't come into this wanting to hate it. Like, I, 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 didn't, I didn't care. I might have loved it. And then it would be like a shocking that I loved it. I came into this with an open mind. I kind of wanted to like it. But then... I can't believe I put myself through that. I've got 60 books sitting there that I actually wanted to read and I just spent worth important days reading this. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed the video. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go. Thanks for watching if you've made it to the end. Let me know down below if there's any other celebrities that wrote awful books that you would like me to read because I don't value myself, evidently. So even though this has been torturous, I, I kind of want to put myself through it again. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I'm going to go cry in a dark corner and um, I hope you're well until I see you next. I won't be. Okay. Oh, okay. Bye. It's the worst. It's just the worst experience of my life.